I think that for most immigrants it's important to remember that JFON doesn't want anything from you. I went to Philadelphia and I saw all these vans where they were like, we'll help you with visa, we'll help you with this. And they charge a lot of money and they make a lot of mistakes. They do this because they believe in us. So you can trust them. And you have to make a choice to trust somebody here. And this is a good group of people to choose to trust. They're, they're not going to become rich doing this. They're not buying a Mercedes Benz because of this. They just believe in us. They believe that we're going to do good things in the country and that as human beings, we deserve a good life. And the best recommendation that I can do is don't stay just in that position. Try to find help. And um, justice for our neighbors is one of the best, I think it's the best that I have found in this moment. Trust them. I, I, I trusted them with my life and they didn't let me down. Justice for Our Neighbors is a ministry of the Methodist Church. Um, we provide free legal service uh, to people who otherwise can't afford an attorney. We limit ourselves to immigration matters. After scheduling the appointment, they're told to bring all of their immigration papers with them. They come to the church. Most of our clinics are held in churches. And then also um, bring them into our hospitality room where we have food and snacks because we know this can be an anxious process and waiting can be very nerve-wracking. So we want to make sure that it's as welcoming and as comfortable for them as it can be. <laughs> but hopefully she'll be able to help you out okay. today though, that would be good. Okay, so we'll, uh, she's waiting, I think, I think you don't have to wait long to be able. You can come with me and we'll go see her. After they've met with the intake volunteer, we'll talk a little bit in more in depth about their situation and what it is that I might be able to do for them. <laughs> it's such a nice day out today. Yeah, it is. So what I do next is I take your file back to my office and I'll sit down and I'll write a letter and explain everything to you, exactly what we need, what kind of documents, what's the process. After that, we might make some copies of some of their documents and then they will receive a follow-up letter within approximately a week to a week and a half, which will describe our appointment, what I may or may not be able to do for them, and possibly refer them to somebody else who's in a position to help them better. Whether you're here legally, illegally, whether you're fluent in English, whether you're still learning, the one thing that we all share is that we actually want to be here. We want to make this our home. We want to contribute in any way we can. And most immigrants grow up with, and they're instilled with, a very serious work ethic. And we come here really wanting to live that American dream. I know everybody feels uh, intimidated sometimes, even to make a phone call because you never know where or who is going to be behind that phone. But uh, there is always, there is a hope. And you can find the help to reach that hope in justice for our neighbor. Um, people should feel comfortable coming to the clinic because, uh, first of all, it's a house of worship. So it's a place that is a safe sanctuary. Um, secondly, it's also been recognized by our community and our community law enforcement leaders, so they know this is a clinic that is happening here. Thirdly, all of our volunteers are required um, to sign confidentiality agreements that nothing that happens in this clinic will ever be spoken about outside. A friend of mine and I went to Ellis Island, and that was such an emotional, powerful experience for me because our country was made of immigrants. 
from countries all over the world. And I said to myself, when I retire, I want to get more involved because I really feel that helping the immigrants and helping them become legal citizens is so important. The reason why I volunteer for Justice for Our Neighbors is because I'm so proud of our country and the opportunities we have here and I know that there are people who are coming and want to have those same kinds of opportunities. So if I can help the immigrants of today, that gives me a, a good feeling, a feeling of purpose. My neighbor is not just the person who lives next door, but anyone in my community, whether they were born here or not. My advice to others would to be just to definitely get in contact with the Lord, somebody who can really help you with the process, because we really thought, we knew what we were doing, we was like, oh yeah, we can just really <laughs> skate by this. You know, people need help, and I can help. I have time, I have uh, skills, I have whatever. I, I can help, and and so it just, it seems like if I have these opportunities, again, why do I deserve them any more than anyone else? We're all immigrants, <laughs> you know? So these are just fellow people. And, and honestly, you could go through the statistics that um, immigrants, the immigrant population tends to be much more entrepreneurial. And this is something our country needs. This is something our youth are going to university for, is now learning how to be an entrepreneur because the way our economy changes. And so I think an immigrant population brings a kind of diversity and a kind of idea set and a kind of skill set that our country thrives on and, and needs. It's so simple as to make a phone call, ask for help, and you're gonna get it. Oh, but we had good rapport. It, the interview went well, and that they actually told us that day that I'd been approved, and a week later, I had my green card. Yes. Now I can apply to any job, go wherever I want, and I can feel the freedom, the, the real freedom that I was looking for and then uh, that brings me peace and I'm happy. Okay, so then we have hope. <laughs> you have hope.